Here on CBS 6, you can see unique stories every day like this one about a beloved Richmond treasure. For generations of Richmonders, it was the place to go to dance under the stars. In his latest I Have a Story, Greg McQuaid and Curtis Akers take us on a stroll down memory lane to a time when Tantilla Garden attracted more than just big crowds. Every time I go by there, I'll look and say, well, that's where it was. <laughs> At Hamilton and Broad, not much catches the eye or ear. This is an unfortunate parking lot. <laughs> that's what it is. But turn back the clock. This corner hummed for decades as an entertainment destination. It was a place to go. To, it was for a big date. Uh, you, you, you wanted to go to, 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 be, to see and be seen. Generations of Richmonders flocked to this very spot to cut a rug night after night. Uh, this was the site of the great Tantilla Ballroom. Tantilla Garden was billed as the South's most beautiful dance hall. It was lit up, it was neon, it was sitting there just, and you could hear the music coming out of it. Richmond Magazine senior writer Harry Kolach Jr. Photographs and memories. Arthur Conley is reviewing a big show. <laughs> Kolach says starting in the 1930s through the 1950s, legendary big bands from the all-female Coquettes to Tommy Dorsey attracted big crowds dressed to the nines. If you were coming to Tantilla, it was kind of formal. It was, this was the big date. The ballroom's main attraction, a retractable roof. And that was a huge deal for, for those attending Tantilla because you could literally, on a clear night, you could see the stars, you could dance under the stars at Tantilla. You could see the dresses, you see a little right. lace here, a little floral, and the hairdos. We love to see the hairdos and, and look at it, but of course you see all suits, couple of tuxes. And Charlotte Vaya and Linda Bassett remember the wonder of Tantilla as wide-eyed teens. You, you would go up to the ballroom from this door. There was dancing on the second level and bowling at Tiny Town on the first. Everybody just loved it because it was a beautiful place, just stunning. For these cousins, Tantilla was a family affair. So this yeah. was an old, old picture, and um, yeah. I think this is um, the one I got from Dementi. Charlotte's father-in-law, Bill Vaya, on the right, was the ballroom's general manager. Linda's dad, Willie Crafton, served as the night spot's doorman. They would wear tuxedos to work, and it was, it, it, and it reminded me of the Frank Sinatra days. Both women always enjoyed a front row seat. People knew how to dance back then, <laughs> ballroom dancing. <laughs> Charlotte is the caretaker of rare Tantilla memorabilia once owned by her late father-in-law. This is at the very front of the stage. Including dozens of rare images and autographed photos from legendary band leaders. Okay, this one um, is Tommy Dorsey, and this is to Bill Vaya, um, sincerely, Tom Dorsey, and then this is to, to Bill, best wishes, uh, Guy Lombardo. Charlotte also cherishes Tantilla's original cash box. Wednesday night was, um, I think they called it singles night, and uh, my husband used to work the box office. Linda credits Tantilla Garden for, well, being born. So that's where my dad met my mother. Her father, Willie, fell in love and would marry Juanita, who was a regular performer at Tantilla. And they did the swing, and they, it's when people dance together, you know, and looked at each other in their eyes. But as the years wore on, ballroom dancing fell out of tune. And on the floor, the aging crowds thinned. I'd love to see some of these people out there dancing again. Management tried attracting younger customers with rock and roll shows, but the magic was slipping away. Yeah, dad was very sad about that. The music ended for good in 1969. Tantilla was torn down, the bricks auctioned off. People were sad. People didn't understand why it was gone. For Charlotte and Linda, the loss of the landmark still stings 53 years later. And like I say, they paved paradise to put up a parking lot. This is paradise torn down for a parking lot. Wow. For historian Harry Kolatz Jr., the end of Tantilla Garden was more than just the demolition of a music venue. We lost a link to our cultural past. Had this place been able to exist, it would have been Richmond's Fillmore East, it would have been Richmond's Roxy, it could have been anything uh, but rubble, which is what it was turned into. Tantilla Garden may have vanished, but if you visit Hamilton and Broad, listen closely 
you just may hear the big band era echoing across the asphalt one more time. If someone's with me, I'll tell them the story. <laughs> Tantilla used to be there. You don't know Tantilla? Well, da, da, da. I tell them the story. Yeah, it's very, very uh, special, special place. For I Have a Story, I'm Greg McQuaid, CBS 6 News.